especially during the 80s. <laughs> it's got to be very invasive, and your life in a lot of ways is not your own because everybody's watching you. And when her hit show was over, people wondered if she would suffer the same fate as other child stars. Children in sitcoms are used up. They are used as props. It was such a recurring thing in every child star's career that there's a point where it's just over, 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 over. Alyssa carved a very different niche for herself in the business. She's sassy. She's sexy. She's bold. Oh, you think I'm sexy? Great. She had affairs with Billy, she had affairs with Andrew, and, and Andrew, and Thomas. Tommy Calabro was, I think, the brother. Yeah, but she was Rose. sleeping with him, too. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> but Alyssa's charmed life has not been immune to heartbreak. It was, I think, hard for me because my parents have been married forever. And I, I think that I was supposed to be good at that. Now, the evolution of a child star whose strength sex appeal and sincerity have created a lasting leading lady this is lifetime's intimate portrait of Alyssa milano Lifetime's Intimate Portrait, hosted by Meredith Vieira. A lot of actresses would be content with one hit series. Alyssa Milano has had three. Who's the Boss, Melrose Place, and now Charmed. And while a lot of child stars have had trouble growing into adult stars, Alyssa has made it look easy. But if you're starting to think that she's led a charmed life, think again. As you're about to discover, it's not just talent that got her this far, it's guts. Like the time she found out that her image was being exploited on the internet. So what did she do? Well, I'll let Alyssa tell you about it. This is her story, her words. In 1995, 21-year-old Alyssa Milano was a former child star who was working hard to prove her staying power in Hollywood. We'll keep in touch. Famous for her role as Tony Danza's TV daughter, she was determined to prove that she had more to offer than met the eye. I hate this town because if someone is beautiful, you don't, people don't think they have any talent. And she has talent. She's a very, very good actress. At that time, most television actors were television actors and film actors were film actors and there was no in between. Um, and I basically did the work that was offered to me as far as, you know, films and movies. Alyssa's career was gaining momentum with her splashy portrayal of Amy Fisher, as well as the steamy Poison Ivy too. But when her 12-year-old brother made a horrible discovery on the internet, the spotlight she had so enjoyed suddenly seemed more sinister. I um, got received this email and opened it up to the attachment, and it was like a bunch of thumbnail pictures of her. A bunch of nudies, some being me and some not being me. And the ones that weren't me were so horribly offensive that it just didn't seem right. It was Alyssa's head as a young child on a nude body. So, of course, I got it and I was, I didn't know what to do with it. I was appalled. When people take a photograph or people see movies and they download it and then they take those images and they put their face on somebody else's body and it would just kind of build a reputation that was so distasteful. Well, what she was upset about was is that anybody can get it. Any of her younger fans could get it. And the problem also being that people were making money on her, you know, and taking this to the bank without any authorization. Alyssa felt both exploited and betrayed, but experience had taught her one valuable lesson. With her family behind her, she had everything she needed to take on the world. Alyssa Milano was born on December 19, 1972, in New York. Her parents, Lynn and Tom, were high school sweethearts who created a very loving, stable environment in which to welcome their firstborn. I really think it set the foundation of my life. I don't remember my parents ever fighting in front of me or, you know, I'm sure they were in their bedroom hashing it out quietly under the sheet. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a very loving 
true family. We know each other almost our entire lives, and, and, and there aren't that many people out there that can say that. Very early on, Alyssa exhibited a love of performance, which her parents encouraged. I don't think I knew any other way, because my, you know, my father was a musician, so he was performing in the house. I just thought that that's what people did, you know, and how people express themselves to other people. She just fell into a, a, an environment that was completely uh, and music involved. I mean, it was just all the time in the house. And um, we just incorporated her into our lives that way. As New Yorkers, the Milanos took full advantage of everything the city had to offer. And on Alyssa's seventh birthday, they surprised her with tickets to the Broadway musical Annie. Alyssa was more than impressed with what she saw. Something just clicked, you know, where I had a pause of something. I don't even know how to articulate it, but something happened. And I looked to my parents and apparently said, I can do that, that's what I want to do. I think it was the one moment that she realized that those kids on the stage were never, weren't any different than she was, and that she should give this a try. As fate would have it, less than a year later, auditions were being held for the touring company of Annie. Alyssa accompanied a family friend who was trying out for one of the roles in the chorus. But when she saw there were other children auditioning, Alyssa wanted in on the action. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew that they were on stage performing and singing and dancing and that I loved doing that, so I figured to, to kill some time, you know, while she was auditioning, I'd go up there and play with the kids. And my parents weren't there. And about six hours later, my babysitter called them and said, you know, you, you should probably come down here because I think your daughter's gonna get this role. I think she was last called. You know, it was like three kids before her, but oh, it was amazing. And she was in the potty when her name was called. It was, it was great. There were 1,500 kids there and four were picked and I was one of the four. But Alyssa's success was not all good news. My parents weren't gonna let me go because they didn't want to disrupt you know, the, the family unit that we, that we had. My mom was gonna have to go on the road with me and they weren't so sure about any of it. It's a hard thing to put your own ego when you're that young. I um, mean, you know, I was 34 at that time and what was a successful clothing designer. And, you know, was upset that I was going to have to put everything on the back burner to take this little girl on the road. I basically locked myself in my room and didn't eat, and, and I don't think I had a clue what was really going on. I just knew that I had achieved something, and it was really important for me to do it. And so finally, they surrendered. <laughs> you look at them and say, I, you want to do this. You want to give them the opportunity to be able to do this. What a great opportunity to know my child. In 1981, Lynn Milano quit her job as a fashion designer in order to accompany her daughter on the road. Although Alyssa was thrilled to be performing, the show presented her with her first real creative challenge. I remember being overwhelmed, like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And I remember there was one dance step in um, You're never, never Fully Dressed Without a Smile, which is one of the numbers, and I couldn't get this one dance step. And I remembered running off the stage crying hysterically and I went to the ladies room the girls room where she ran into and I said to her what I want you to understand is that you don't really have to do this and I was just I was like no I have to do this. you're so dramatic I don't want to do this and I said just put your best foot forward they loved you they hired you they're gonna give you a chance and she went back out there and of course learned the whole number and was wonderful to this day I still remember that one little part of that routine because <laughs> I worked so hard to get it. After 18 months, the Annie tour was finally over, and Alyssa and her mother returned to New York. Lynn was eight months pregnant, and it was time for the Milanos to once again become a family unit. My parents asked what I wanted for a closing present because we knew that the play was closing, and I said a flute and a brother. So I took care of the baby brother part. And I took care of the flute. Not that I was spoiled or anything. <laughs>